Question number 14 of a possible 15 is for £500,000. You have a quarter of a million, you have two lifelines, but you would lose £218,000. Take your time, have a look at this question for half a million. Which of these creatures are most associated with the naturalist and artist John James Audubon? Beetles, butterflies, birds, bats. I'm reading this twice, Chris. Take as long as you need. I'll play, Chris. He's one of the great bird artists. Are you absolutely sure? Because you would lose £280,000 if you give me the wrong answer. No? He's, he's one of the great bird, bird painters, so it's birds. Final answer. Final answer. I can tell you your wife thinks it's butterflies. She's wrong. You're right. You've just won. Pretty good. It's wonderful. Yes. You've been here about a minute. You're half a million pounds better off. I'm earning. I'm earning more quickly than you, Chris. I think you probably are. <laughs> right. Do you want to hold that, or I'll put it there? Uh, you can hang on to it, Chris. How do you feel now? Well, uh, it's a dream situation. That's an immense amount of money. I'll get to see the million-pound question, even if I don't tackle it. And I've got a couple of lifelines, so it, it doesn't really get much better in in millionaire. It doesn't. Terms. It doesn't. I don't remember anybody ever getting to this situation, question number 15, with two lifelines left. So you I can get rid of two, you can still phone a friend. No pressure on your friend then. <laughs> right, Pat. You know this by heart, but I will tell you, at this moment, you can walk away with a cheque for £500,000, half a million. If you go for the next question and give me the right answer, I would be absolutely thrilled to bits to write you out a cheque for one million pounds. You can play a 50-50 to get rid of two possibilities. You can phone a friend. You can do both of those things and still walk away with half a million pounds. If you give me the wrong answer here, you've still got 32,000 pounds, but you would lose 468,000. I'm sorry, that, that figure, that, it's kind of that sober, number is so it? large, I don't think I can actually yeah. grasp it. Nobody's ever done that, I tell you now. It's not really a kind of fame you want to be part of. But three people have answered this next question correctly. You could be the fourth. Have a look at it. You have two lifelines. This is question number 15 of a possible 15. Which of these is not one of the American Triple Crown horse races? Arlington Million. Belmont Stakes, Kentucky Derby, Preakness Stakes. You have two lifelines. It's worth one million pounds. I have an idea what the answer is. I'll use my 50-50, please. OK. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Pat the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Is the one you think it is still there? Yes, it is. Um, I'm fairly confident. Um. <laughs> You're a very calm man. I, I, I'll use my phone, a friend. It would, might be foolish. Not OK. Too. Then but are I, you going to ring? I, I am confident. <laughs> They'll be pleased. Who are you going to ring? I'll ring Mark. I beg your pardon? Mark. Who's Mark? He's a friend. He's uh, hopefully a knowledgeable friend. But I, I have a good idea what the answer is. Do you want me to tell Mark how much money is involved? You can do, yes. <laughs> OK. Only it might spook him a bit. Right, where's Mark? Um, he's up in the uh, northwest. Hello? 
Mark? Yes, it is. Hi, it's Chris Tarrant here. Good evening. Hi, Chris. Well, we're on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Uh-huh. Uh, I've got Pat here. He's come back, as you know. Yeah. Uh, he's doing really quite well. Great stuff. Yeah. Um, he's on a million. Wow! <laughs> hey! Don't forget about that tank quid that he owes me then until next week. <laughs> well, only if you give him the right answer. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure you absolutely understand this. He's got £500,000 at this moment. Right. There are only two possible answers left. One is right and one is wrong. Okay. okay. His use is 50-50. Right. The right answer is worth a million pounds. If you give him the wrong answer and he goes for that, you cost him £468,000. All right, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> right, are you ready for this? Yep. Right, the next voice you hear will be Pat. He will tell you the question and two possible answers. One of them is worth a million. Pat, lots of luck. You have 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Okay. Which of these is not one of the American Triple Crown horse races? The Arlington Million, the Kentucky Derby. Which of these is not one of the American Triple Crown horse races? The Arlington Million, the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Ten seconds. It's the Arlington Million. I'm yes. um, 90% certain yes, on that. Yes, Arlington, Arlington Million. Million. Thank you, Mark. That's what I thought. That's the British. I'm Irish. Thank you. <laughs> Are all your friends like this? He's very, very calm. I thought it was the Arlington Million from when they first went up. It's the Preakness, Belmont and Kentucky are the American Triple Crown. I think the Arlington Million... Oh, this chat will sound very foolish if I'm wrong. I think the Arlington Million is a much more recent um, innovation. If you're wrong, you lose £468,000. I'll take a few moments, I think, before I commit myself. Kentucky Derby, Belmont, Preakness. That is the Triple Crown. The Arlington Million is not a Triple Crown race. Final answer. Final answer. You've just won one million pounds! <laughs> oh, what are you right? One million pounds! That's tremendous. You are so cool, man! Yes. Fantastic! Sheila! Sheila, come down here! Sheila! Sheila, come here! You're married to a millionaire! Come on, my darling! You are married to a millionaire! Come on, come on! Sheila! <laughs> You didn't come last time, did you? Oh, God. I thought you'd have taken the two. <laughs> no, 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 I couldn't. He was so calm. Oh, that's what he's like. Either that's knows what he's or like. he doesn't. That's what he's like. That was amazing. And you said very clearly, when you, when you came back, you said, I'm really going to have a look at this. I'm not at all confident. If there's any doubt, I'm going to walk away. No, I was confident um, on board. Have a look. That's it. It's a work, hey. of, it's a work of art. It is a work of art. <laughs> hey, Pat Gibson. One million pounds. One million pounds. Unbelievable. It's yours. Unbelievable. It's happened again. It's the fourth time you've seen it on the show here in the UK. Pat Gibson has done it again on the show that's changed the viewing habits of the nation and the world. He has just become a millionaire on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's worth five millions and it gives away millions. Since we started back in 1998, Millionaire here in the UK alone has given away nearly £40 million. Staggering amount of money. Ten more contestants will be playing for maybe another million. After the break on the next part of tonight, who wants to be a millionaire? He is. Don't go away.
bottom night it's been. Before the break, Pat Gibson from Wigan in Lancashire became our fourth UK millionaire. I can also tell you he is now our youngest millionaire so far. Now, Pat has reminded us all how it can be done. We now have ten brand new contestants, you can imagine, all very, 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 very eager to follow him into that seat and win another million. It could be done. Let's meet them. They are Chris Holmes from Somerset. Judith Gregory from Suffolk. Leslie Cook from Kent. Barry Simmons from West Yorkshire. Michael Hearn from Surrey. Kieran Fee from County Tyrone. Pete Alexander from South Gloucestershire. Francis Hughes from Nottinghamshire. Irene Arnilus from London. And Brian Rowan from South Yorkshire. They're all looking understandably very, very keen tonight. Right, here we go. Time for that opening ten to play fastest finger first. Remember, there are four answers, only one correct order. First to find it in the fastest time will win next tonight to play for one million pounds. And as you've seen, it can be done. It's just been done. Nice and quiet in the audience, please, so they can concentrate. Here comes the question. Put these saints in alphabetical order. So four saints coming up. We want one farthest back towards A, going down towards Z. Here they come. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Tell you what, their fingers were a blur, some of them, but I'm not sure from the look on their face they all got that right. Looks fairly straightforward. They're doing it against each other and against the clock for a million quid. Let's see. Um, fairly straightforward, alphabetically, J. Uh, John. Then it's Luke, J-L. Then it's Mark, M-A-R. And then, of course, it's Matthew, M-A-T-T. Now, ten star. How many got it right out of ten? Let's have a look. Uh, not all of them at all. Leslie Cook, though, was fastest in 4.03 seconds. <laughs> Leslie, it's you! It's <laughs> only just sitting there going... Well, you're all of a flutter, aren't you? I am. Is your heart all of a pizza patter? I can't believe it. Well, believe there is a million pounds oh. already been won tonight. There could be a second million pounds, and it could be won by you. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be very, very nice? Do you want to play for a million? I Pop, love you do. Uh, busy cleaning all the glitter off a chair. This is Leslie Cook, a learning support assistant from Crayford in Kent. Husband Kevin is up there in the audience, and they have two kids, Laura and Billy. Kevin, I'm sure he'd be delighted to have the whole nation know, turns 50 in May. <laughs> and with a big win, Leslie wants to throw him a huge party. She also wants to buy him a boat on the Norfolk Broads, only Leslie says she's terrified of water. Now, serious business tonight at this moment. Leslie is just 15 questions away from another £1 million. And if she does get stuck on the way, she has three lifelines to help her. She's got 50-50, she can phone a friend, and she can ask this audience. Leslie, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be Our Fifth Millionaire? Right, question number one is for £100. Here it comes. What name is given to the froth on a pint of beer? Arm, head, hand, eye. It's head. You have one hundred pounds. <laughs> Question number two for two hundred quid. What's the usual name for the soft garments worn by babies on their feet? Booties, slipperies, shoeies, sockies. That's booties. You have £200. <laughs> Question number three. Which of these words describes an unscrupulous or dishonest person? Meister, shyster, heister, feister. It's shyster. You have 300 quid. <laughs> Question number four for five hundred pounds. Which of these phrases means the absolute truth? Bible truth, testament truth, gospel truth, chapter truth. 
gospel truth. It's the right answer. You have five hundred pounds. <laughs> Right, Leslie, the last point, you could go home with nothing at all. I'm sure it won't happen. You have all three lifelines. This one would guarantee you going back with at least a thousand pounds. Here it comes. What was the name of Tina Turner's husband who sang with her on River Deep Mountain High? Otis, Marvin, Ike, Isaac. That was Ike. It's the right answer. Leslie, you got a thousand pounds. Now do you feel better? You look so relieved. I am relieved. Listen, yeah. you've got a thousand pounds, so that's that, that relaxes you a bit. You, you're over that worst first bit. Have a look at question number six. So far, you haven't needed any lifelines at all. This is for two thousand pounds. Which item of confectionery is known in the USA as cotton candy? Toffee apple, candy floss, fudge, chewing gum. It's candy floss. Sure. Sure. Why are you so sure? I don't know. I just... I'm sure. I've heard it called that. It is candy for Final answer. Final answer. You have £2,000. <laughs> Seems to me you're enjoying it a little bit more with, uh, with each right answer. Question number seven, Leslie, uh, take your time. You haven't touched the lifeline yet. This is for £4,000. What is the world's largest living marsupial? Red kangaroo, water opossum, common wombat, scrub wallaby. You can ask the audience, that's what they're for. Uh, audience, let's try and get Leslie up to at least £4,000, but it's the first lifeline she's needed, it's worth four grand. This is the question. What is the world's largest living marsupial? Now, A on your screens is red kangaroo, B is water opossum, C is common wombat, D is scrub wallaby. All vote now. Uh, 79%, quite a big majority are saying it's the red kangaroo. Um, none of the others really registering much with this audience anyway. I'll um, go with the audience. Red kangaroo. Final answer. Final answer. Absolutely right. Well done, everybody. Got four thousand bucks. <laughs> Question number eight. Have a look. It's the first time you've needed a lifeline. You've still got a 50-50. You can still phone a friend. Um, this is for £8,000. The Hapney Bridge is a feature of which European capital city? Moscow. Budapest. Rome. Dublin. Computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Leslie the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. One of those is worth £8,000 to you. The Hapney Bridge, a feature of which European capital city? Budapest or Dublin? Dublin. Why were you doing that? Because I don't really know. I'm just guessing. Play? Play. Final answer. Dublin. You just won £8,000. <laughs> Your face is a picture. <laughs> Listen, you've got £8,000. It's officially it's the, uh, the Wellington Bridge uh, after the Iron Duke, and they call it the Hapney Bridge. What do your kids say? What do your kids now, Laura, Billy, what do they say when they said, you know, when their new mum is coming on the show? Billy told me to start revising, because that's what I keep saying to him when he has a test or an exam. And Laura just said, relax and enjoy it. And you're, are you enjoying it, or are you relaxed? I'm getting better, Chris. Well, you will. 
Now, you have £8,000. You still have a phone a friend. Um, this is question number nine. It's worth 16000 You have 8000 at this minute. Here it comes. Which country will host the 2007 Rugby World Cup? Italy. Samoa. Romania. France. Got a phone All friend. I know is that we won it, but I don't know where it's going. Next time. Yeah, I'll phone a friend, please, Chris. Okay, now who would know I'll this? I'll phone. You need a rugby fan. Mike, please. Mike? Who's he? He's a friend. Just a friend. Just phone a friend, friend. Yeah. <laughs> is he a sportsman? Yeah. Okay. Well, phone Mike. Uh, tell him the question, four possible answers. Let's see, you can still take £8,000 if you're not happy with his answer. Okay, it's worth 16, but you would lose seven if you get me a wrong answer. So take your time, see what he says. Hello? Mike? Hello? Mike, it's Chris Tarrant, good evening. Oh, hello, Chris. How are you? Good, well, thank you. Well, I'm good, uh, and Leslie's good. Leslie's here in the chair, as you right. know, because that's why we're ringing you. Yeah. Um, as one of her phone and friends. She's doing all right, she's on £8,000. Right. Yeah, it's good. Um, but. Uh, she's stuck on one particular question. She says she thinks of all her friends. You're the one most likely to know this. I hope so. I hope so. All right, mate. Fingers crossed. Next question will be Leslie's. All right, thank you. She'll tell you the question. There are four possible answers. One of these is worth sixteen thousand. Leslie, you've got thirty seconds, my darling. Your time starts now. Hi, Mike. Hi, Leslie. Which country will host the two thousand and seven Rugby World Cup? Italy, Samoa, Romania, or France? I'll, I'll be guessing here, Leslie, actually. I don't really know, I don't know this one at all. What would you guess then, Mike? I, I would say... Um, France. No, I can't risk it. I can't. Because I haven't got a clue. No. I'll take the money, please, Chris. Is that good? It's good. What will you do with 8,000? I'll throw a party for Kevin in May. Well, not when he's 50. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> It'll be a big party for eight grand. No, I will. I'll take the money because I haven't got a clue. It would Final be silly, answer. yeah. It'd be silly Final to answer. lose that money. Final okay. answer. OK, give a big hand. Leslie Cook goes away with 8,000 pounds. And just before you go... <laughs> just before you go, um, he just didn't sound that confident, but I'm afraid Mike was That's right. right. The answer, it will be in France in 2007. Oh. Give her a big hand. She still goes away with £8,000 safe. Well played, my darling. Enjoy it. And have a great party. Thank you. Well played. <laughs> Leslie Cook, £8,000. Still very eager to play Faster Finger First, nice and quiet please in the audience. Here comes the next question. Starting first thing in the morning, put these TV partnerships in the order they are normally seen during the day. Desamel, Eamon and Fiona, Richard and Judy, Philip and Fun. Let's have a look. Uh, fairly standard sort of day, I think. Most of them get this. Let's have a look. Eamon and Fiona, um, earliest in the morning on GMTV. Uh, Philip and Fern, then mid morning on this morning. Uh, today with Des and Mel at lunchtime, and then later in the afternoon, Richard and Judy. So that's the right order. Now, how many got it right of our remaining contestants? Uh, two got it right. Arena Nillis was fastest, though, in 5.27 seconds. Arena you. So, question number one for £100. Anything very untidy or messy is often referred to as a what? Dog's breakfast, cat's lunch, hamster's tea, rabbit's supper. Dog's breakfast, cat's lunch, hamster's tea, 
Dog's breakfast. It's the right answer. There are no trick questions. You've got hundred pounds. <laughs> I mean, take your time, have a good look at each question. You've got your lifelines, going to get you up to at least £1,000. This is question number two. In which traditional party game do participants have to sit down when the music stops? Pass the parcel, blind man's buff, musical chairs, Chinese whispers. Uh, musical chairs. You've got £200. <laughs> Question number three, four, three hundred. What name is usually given to a ring symbolising everlasting love? Honour ring, pledging ring, cherish ring, eternity ring. Eternity ring. You have three hundred pounds. <laughs> Question number four. Which of these words refers to a small quantity of alcoholic drink? Stinker, snifter, stealer, sweater. I'll go for snifter. A snifter is the right answer, £500. <laughs> Question number five would guarantee you going home with at least £1,000. Here it comes. What is the name for electricity generated by the pressure of water? Thermoelectricity, hydroelectricity. Geo electricity, astro electricity, hydro electricity. You have one thousand pounds. Well played. <laughs> Feel better? I haven't disgraced myself yet. No, you haven't disgraced yourself. I tell you, you've got a thousand pounds guaranteed. Um, student loans. Yes. They're a nasty business, aren't they? Very. Are we talking large loan? 60, sorry, 15,000. So you need a few more right answers, yeah? It would help. OK, you've got £1,000. Question number six is worth 2000 You can't lose on this one anyway, and you have three lifelines. Have a look at it, tell me what you want to do with this for £2,000. Who won an Oscar for her portrayal of Sally Bowles in the 1972 film Cabaret? Liza Minnelli, Barbara Streisand, Julie Andrews, Doris Day. Liza Minnelli. John? Yes. Final answer. Final answer. It's an absolutely fantastic film as well. £2,000. <laughs> Question number seven is for 4000 You have three lifelines untouched. Who was the manager of the Republic of Ireland football team at the 2002 World Cup? Mick McCarthy, Jack Charlton, Billy Bingham, Mark Lawrenson. It's worth £4,000. Can I ask the audience? You can. Uh, audience, let's get you on your keypads. Please say how many of you know about, uh, about football and about Irish football. The 2002 World Cup. This is the question. Who was the manager of the Republic of Ireland football team at the 2002 World Cup? One of those is worth £4,000 to Irene. A, B, C or D, all vote now. Uh, 75% say Mick McCarthy, 20% Jack Charlton, 3% uh, Billy Bingham, 2% Mark Lawrence. It's up to you. Do you have any idea at all? No. No. Oh. Well, it's up to you. It's a pretty big old percentage, but um, it's your call. I'll go with the audience. Even though you have no idea of the answer? Correct. OK, final answer. Final answer. Absolutely right. Well done, everybody. Thank you. You've got £4,000. Thank, Thank you. That's right. It's the uh, first lifeline you needed. Question number eight is for £8,000. You have a 50-50 and a phone a friend left. Here it comes. What is the title of Chef Anthony Worrell Thompson's autobiography? Raw, rare, medium, well done. I'm not sure. Um, my instinct is rare. 
but I'm not entirely sure. Can I take a 50-50? You can. Uh, computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Ari in the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Yeah, well, Fine. that instinct for rare doesn't look too promising, then. Um, well, you got raw or medium. Uh, one of those is worth £8,000. I'm going to play raw. Why? Because I don't think it's called medium. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's good thinking. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £8,000. <laughs> How are you feeling, Irene? Twitchy. Twitchy. I'm a bit twitchy. Well, now, question number nine. If you did go for this and give me a right answer, would sort your student loan out. And after that, it would all be up and up and up. Uh, and you have got to find a friend. Mm -hmm. You're two away from 32,000. Have a look at it. This is question number nine of a possible 15. Linz is a city in which European country? Sweden, Belgium, Croatia, Austria. I think it's Austria. It's for your student loan. Or to lose seven grand. Austria. Final answer. Final answer. You've just paid off your student loan. Yes. Good girl. It's kind of surreal, this thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Week after week, it's kind of, am I really here? <laughs> well, you've been here on a big night, and it could be a very big night. You've got £16,000. You've still got one phone-a-friend lifeline. Question number 10 would guarantee you £32,000 if you gave me the right answer. Have a look at it. It's question number 10 of possible 15. What was the world's first jet airliner? Sopwith Camel, de Havilland Comet, Douglas DC-3, Boeing 747. Now, one of those is worth £32,000. You have got a phone a friend. I think it's a Sopwith Camel. Um, but it's a lot of money to gamble with. The Boeing's too old. What am I saying? I don't know. No, no neither do I. Do you? <laughs> uh, comets were around in the 50s, DC-3s. Again, around the 50s. I think it probably is the Sopwith, but I'm not sure. I will need to phone a friend. Okay, now who would know? Luke. Luke, okay. Yes. Uh, tell Luke the question, four possible answers. Have a listen and see what he comes up with. Uh, it's worth £32,000. Hello? Luke? Yeah? It's Chris Tarrant, hello. Oh my god, I knew, oh. I knew it. Good evening. Hello. Well, we're doing that little show, that Who Wants To Be A Millionaire show. Hey, grand. Now, I've got Irene here. Yep. Which is good. Um, and she's doing good. She's uh, on £16,000 at this wow. point. Wow! <laughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, well, she's on £16,000, but she's stuck. Right. Uh, she's not certain about an answer. She thinks you'll definitely know it, OK? Oh, my God, OK. It does mean it's worth £32,000 to us. Right. serious money. All right, mate. Right, Irene, um, you've got 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Luke. What was the world's first jet airliner? Sopwith Camel, de Havilland Comet, Douglas DC-3 or Boeing 747? Can you run back to me one more time? Sopwith Camel, yep. de Havilland Comet, Douglas DC-3, Boeing 747. You've got right. ten okay, seconds. it's the Comet. It's the Comet? Yeah. You sure? Yes. OK. All right, cheers, hon. Bye. Thank you. I thought it was the Sopwith Camel just now. I know. I know um, still might be. I would, uh, I would go with him. 
and go with the de Havilland Comet. Final answer. Final answer. Comet. Yes. It's a good thing you changed your mind. Comet is the right answer. You got thirty-two thousand pounds. Good old Luke. You've got a look of serene calm on your face now. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Well, that's yours. You hold on to it, please. That's very kind. Thank you. OK. It's, uh, it's good here. It's it? good. It's good here. I thought you'd like it. Now, you have £32,000. That's guaranteed. Whatever happens. You know, you're five away from a million. Five questions between you and £1 million. You would be the fifth millionaire. <laughs> but... Uh, you have no lifelines left. Question number 11, though. You might as well play this no matter what. Uh, it's worth £64,000. You're guaranteed 32. Here it comes. What was the nationality of the composer, Bella Bartok? French. German. Hungarian. Polish. I don't know, but... Uh, shot in the dark. I'll say Hungarian. Why? Um, I have no real reason. None whatsoever that I can give you. OK. Final answer. Final answer. I was just wondering why you went for that one, because it is the right answer. You got £64,000. Oh! Puzzle. That's kind of spooky. That <laughs> is extraordinary. Good Lord. You look absolutely devastated. <laughs> Want to do some more? Um, but, but... Yeah. Well, look, this is the situation. You have no lifelines. But at this moment, you've got that check for £64,000. Good, A. Eh? Unbelievable. Believe. Believe, my child. Believe. I believe. £64,000. OK, you can walk away with that amount of money. Have a look at question number 12. It is worth £125,000. You do not have to play this question. You're guaranteed 32. If you give me a wrong answer, you lose 32 of the 64000 you've got at this moment. But it's worth £125,000. Take your time. Tell me what you want to do. The original Charing Cross was built as a memorial to which Queen of England? Eleanor, Philippa, Isabella, Matilda. I don't know. Um... You look... Yeah. Certainly I... leaning towards something. Yes. What do you think? Matilda. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but in all conscience, I can't. I can't gamble that money. It's your money. I'm. Uh, 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 I'm just stunned and amazed to have reached this level. And I mean, to double it would be superb. But I'm, uh, I don't know enough to um, hedge my bets, literally. Please may I go home? Please may I go home? <laughs> Please can I go home, Daddy, with that check? Final answer, you can take the money. Yes, that's my final answer. OK, give Irene a huge round of applause. She goes away. With this check for £64,000. I tell you what, the way you were focusing on things like I don't know, Hungary, getting the right answer, Austria, all the way through, and if you'd have said Matilda... Don't tell me. You'd have been completely and utterly wrong. <laughs> right answer was Eleanor. Right, 
We have eight contestants left to play fast finger first again. Nice and quiet, please, in the audience. Here comes the next question. Put the sites of these famous British battles in order from north to south. Bosworth, Culloden, Hastings, St Albans. Fargus North, uh, Culloden up in Scotland, uh, Bosworth in the Midlands, uh, so Norman's just north of London, and Hastings obviously down in Sussex on the south coast. So that's the right order. Now, eight started on that. How many got it right out of eight? Uh, most of them. Who was fastest? Brian Rowan in 4.20 seconds. Brian! Come on, big boy. And you thought you weren't going to get home tonight, didn't you? You got home, didn't you? Let's go, matey. Here we have Brian Rowan, who comes from Sheffield, South Yorks. He runs a greetings card franchise and likes going for bike rides, not walks. His sister Linda is up there and he's hoping the questions aren't hard, because despite what Brian does for a job, no one sent him a good luck card. <laughs> Fifteen questions, three new lifelines, one million pounds. Brian, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, question number one is for £100. Take your time, Brian. Here it comes. What name is normally given to a small block of sugar? Lump. Clod. Wad. Clump. <laughs> I think that's lump. Uh... You have £100. <laughs> question number two is for £200. Which of these words refers to the edges of a town or city? Out blouses, out dresses, out frocks, out skirts. I'm glad the last one came up, out skirts. You have 200 pounds. <laughs> Question number three for 300 quid. Which of these mythological beings are most associated with helping Father Christmas? Trolls, dragons, elves, werewolves. <laughs> Elves, see. Yeah, three hundred pounds. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> You're starting to enjoy it now, aren't you? Question number four is for five hundred pounds. Let's get you up to a thousand at least. This is for five hundred quid. What is the name of the area of London traditionally associated with Cockneys? North Island, South Bank, East End, West Side. That's East End. Yeah, five hundred pounds. <laughs> Right, Brian, you have all three lifelines intact. Last point, you could go home with nothing. I'm sure it won't happen. Question number five would guarantee you going back to Yorkshire tonight with at least £1,000. Here it comes. The island of Arran is off the coast of which country? Denmark, France, Scotland, Germany. Scotland. You have £1,000. We'll play, Brian. <laughs> Right. Question number six is for £2,000. You have not yet touched any lifelines. Which film character is famous for saying, my mama always said life was like a box of chocolates? Jerry Maguire, Annie Hall, Forrest Gump, Mary Poppins. Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks, yeah. Final answer? Yeah, final answer. Absolutely right. You've got two thousand pounds. <laughs> said uh, my mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Great movie. Uh, you have two thousand pounds. Question number seven is for four thousand. Who wrote the hit songs Alfie and Walk On By? <laughs> Leonard Bernstein, George Gershwin, Cole Porter, Burt Bacharach. Tea, but that kind of like. It's very short. Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. Absolutely right. You got four thousand pounds.
It's actually uh, Bacharach and David, but Bacharach and Hal David. Right, question number eight. You're flying, Brian. Question number eight is for £8,000. What gave away the presence of another human being on the island of the marooned Robinson Crusoe? Skull, footprint, buried treasure, smouldering fire. It's worth £8,000. It was a footprint in the sand on the beach. Yeah. This was it. Man Friday's, I hope. <laughs> Final answer. Final answer, yeah, footprint. It was a footprint. You got eight thousand pounds. <laughs> <laughs>